Today I want to show you how to build and use a bottle trap. And a bottle trap is an improvised, usually recycled, aquatic trap for the most part. Uh, very easy to make, good design, and incredibly effective. Now uh, the idea behind this is that it's going to be able to capture crawfish, small perch, minnows, things of that sort. And uh, whether for short term you've got to get some bait and you're out on the water fishing, or if you find yourself in a survival situation and you're needing something capable of capturing a few more calories to get you through, this is something you need to know how to do. Now uh, you can make this out of an assortment of different bottles. For the most part, any size will work from four gallon down under 20 ounces. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make one out of a two liter bottle this time and show you several of them thrown out today and uh, demonstrate their usage. But uh, pretty simple to make, easy design. I'll show you how I do it. Now uh, there's not too many mods that you can do to these. Uh, there's not much room to change stuff up, but uh, you definitely need to get the gist of it. So check this out. Right. I'm gonna take my Leatherman and uh, with the straight blade, if you have scissors on you, those will work as well. But you're gonna put the bottle on its side. And uh, you're not gonna need the cap at this time. So set that off to the side, don't lose it. So here's the idea. With most of these bottles, you're going to have pretty much uh, one section. It's uniform, smooth all the way, largest diameter. And then you're going to have kind of a funnel area, which is the spout. Now the funnel itself is going to become the mouth for the trap. That's going to be where the creatures are going to go inside of it. Now, to build this trap, you're going to follow that funnel up until it reaches its outermost limits. All right, so it's at its largest diameter. And uh, wherever it becomes smooth for at least an inch, you can go back about a quarter inch to a half inch. Puncture straight down, okay? If you have scissors, your OCD, and you just want to make this thing straight, you can go ahead and do that. But you are going to carefully, as straight as you can manage, cut the top of that bottle all the way off. And it does not have to look pretty. It just has to work. Now the trick is lining up both ends where they uh, both come out of the same spot. Doesn't always happen that way though. And off. Okay. At the very end you ought to have two pieces. Okay. So to give you an idea of how this trap works, let's go ahead and uh, skip a few steps and show you what it'll look like when it's done. Now notice I've taken the top of that bottle and I've inverted it, and if you've done it right, it should nest in there tightly. Okay, so I'm pushing the top of that bottle into itself, not rattling around. If you can see inside there, the uh, inlet is actually directly in the center of the bottle. So I'll check that out. Might take a little bit of tinkering to get it straight, but that's the main idea. Now you're going to put a little bit of bait inside of this. It doesn't take very much. And uh, the way this works is that minnows, crawfish, whatever you're trying to trap, are going to find their way through the funnel because it's very easy and it guides them. And uh, when they try to get out of the bottle, it's going to be much more difficult to find the exit. So that's the main idea. Now there's a couple more things that need to happen with this bottle. Uh, for one thing, you need to, a way for the scent of your bait to get out. And uh, the best way to do that is to start poking holes. Now, different people, some people actually uh, heat up a piece of wire and go ahead and melt holes all throughout. I find that that uh, releases a lot of chemicals and gives uh, kind of a different flavor that can dilute the smell of your bait. So the best thing I've found is using a blade. And I'll go ahead and take the blade slice it through just like that. Okay, and I usually slice with the bottle's length. That way I don't really mess with the integrity of the bottle. You can take your time and you can uh, sit there and pretty much whittle a rounded hole in. That works as well, as long as that hole is smaller than the bait you're trying to capture. Now you're gonna want lots and lots and lots of these holes. This thing needs to look like a colander when you're done. So every inch, all the way around, all the way around the diameter, move up an inch, do it again, all the way around. You want to have lots of water moving in and out, 
and that way if you throw some dog food in here and it gets too concentrated, uh, the fish will still want to come in. You don't want to have a soup consistency inside of here. Uh, your fish won't be going in if you have that issue. Uh, you want your fish to be able to, or whatever you're catching, to be able to breathe and get the oxygen they need. So that helps out. You want this bottle to be able to actually sink in the water. And sometimes I'll put some pebbles in there. And with these holes, it might take a minute, but it'll sink down and get where you need to so that you can trap it. But uh, the more holes, the better for the most part. All right. A couple more things that need to happen. You need a way of making sure that this funnel stays where it's at. Okay, so it stays centered where that inlet is right there in the middle. And uh, you need to, a way to uh, pretty much attach this onto a line uh, so that whenever you throw it out in the water, you can retrieve it. You just don't want these things floating around. They'll get out of reach. Uh, they'll float away. You need to be able to pull them back in. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, what I'm starting right here, is uh, I'm finding a spot up here on the lip where both pieces of plastic double up real well, side by side. And uh, ever so carefully, I'm gonna go ahead, not really adding any pressure, because if you've messed with plastic bottles, you know that your blade will just uh, kind of let loose and slice right through. It'll lead to uh, getting stitches very quickly. Slowly just open up a hole through both of them. And uh, that is going to be where you're going to put uh, a piece of twine, some rope. Uh, if you've ever done it and made uh, cordage out of bottles themselves, you find, found extra ones, you can use some of that to attach. But you'll tie that off, come around to the opposite side, make sure that you're aligned exactly the way you want. This is my opposite side right here. So make sure I'm happy with it. Double that down. And we'll do the exact same thing to the other side. And so again, this is going to be where you tie off your cordage to be able to pull this trap in. And you need to make it in such a way that you can uh, untie it so that you can take this off and retrieve whatever you've caught. So you'll attach that with knots on both ends and attach your line to that and throw this out. Put your bait in, throw a couple of pebbles in to make sure that it sinks to the bottom. That's pretty much it. Now a couple tips. Uh, a lot of times whenever you see me throwing crawfish traps out, you see that I have one line, one trap. With these, uh, when you're using them, a lot of times you're going to be low on cordage, especially in a survival situation. I, uh, in the past, have put these out like a stringer. So every foot, foot and a half, I have another one. So I'll throw out four or five of these bottles all at once. And it works out really well and you save a lot of, uh, a lot of materials in that way. All right. Uh, you also need to use a gear tag. Okay, if you're trying this thing out, make sure that you're following all your regulations, your trap entrances, your trap dimensions need to be within your state and federal laws. If you're not sure, go ahead and uh, consult the internets. All right. Here in Texas, it's Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, or contact your local game warden to make sure. All right. Be sure you're doing this legally. Now, uh, one of the last things I want to mention is some of the downsides of this. Once you are done with this, I need you to go ahead and destroy it completely because uh, these things have the capacity to continue to kill uh, long term. So if it gets away from you or if you leave it on the bank, it's not over. It can catch all kinds of lizards, insects. It will continue killing for years until it finally breaks down if it ever breaks down. So break them down, take them apart, cut them up for me. Don't leave these things out in the water. Uh, secondly, you're probably going to have more regulations on these things uh, after a while because plastics in the water, especially when they are uh, subject to sunlight, are going to end up breaking down. And uh, they exude all kinds of nasty chemicals, uh, namely PCBs, and that's becoming a concern uh, for our fresh water and salt water. Uh, primarily because those chemicals get into the fish that we eat and uh, that, that in turn gets into us and that's really an issue. So this is not a long-term thing. Go out and buy you a crawfish, a minnow trap, whatever you're trying to do, do it right. Buy the galvanized steel, buy the professional stuff. Don't use these things long-term. But in a pinch, temporarily, this is something to know how to do. All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make four or five of these and put them on a stringer, as I mentioned earlier. We'll throw them out and let's see what we get. Let's go ahead and throw these out. I've got three of the two liters, one of the three liter, 
and uh, I know y'all wanted me to, so I went ahead and uh, rigged up the four gallon, and we'll uh, set that further down the creek. But this is the stringer configuration I talked about. Got about six pieces of dried dog food in each one of these. Use whatever bait works, and several of the pebbles. Uh, here in Texas, got my gear tag on it. This is going to be pretty much a minute trap, although we won't be keeping anything in it. So, here we go. Have patience whenever it sinks. It's going to take a while. Otherwise, wish it luck. Uh, second toss. Make sure it stays out there this time. Patience, patience. Give this a couple hours. Let's go ahead and uh, throw out the big one. Alright, throwing out the four gallon trap. Uh, due to its dimensions, uh, this would be classified as a crawfish trap. And all I would be able to pull out of this here in Texas is crawfish. So uh, definitely check your laws, regulations before you try something like this. A little bit of extra dog food, a little bit of extra weight because it has so much more volume. Chunk it out. Wind will probably push it for a little while up against the bank. Again, a little bit of patience while it sinks. Wish you luck. Let's see what it catches. Well, it's been a couple hours, and it is time to check our trap. Wind's come up a little bit. Alright. Let's see if we've had any luck. Small creatures for our four small traps. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Now check that out. See the coloration. Check out the minnows. So there you go. All right, several good pieces of bait if you're fishing, and a few calories. We're trying to uh, survive out here. Now, different traps, depending on uh, where they're placed, the angles that they fell at. A couple little minnows in there as well. Little guys, but every little bit counts. Notice that the bait is largely intact inside of each one of these. That's a good thing. It means that uh, they'll continue to uh, capture more and more. Now, a uh, few things that I didn't mention, and we still have the big trap to go ahead and uh, open up. To access, you don't have to untie both sides. You can pull it out just like that and close it again and tie it right back in. Uh, if you are not getting the size uh, fish or crawfish or whatever you're trying to get that you are looking for, uh, you can modify this further by tapering this off and cutting more and more your funnel back to open up a bit. But understand, the bigger that your funnel entrance is, uh, the easier it is for your minnows or whatever's going in there to get out. So, everything you do is going to have consequences. Let's go ahead and uh, put this back in there, see what else we can catch. Good evening. And check our big trap. Pretty successful. Good. All right, time for the big one. Let's see how it's done. <laughs> and remember, it's now got four gallons of water in it, roughly. What I just did there, trying to pick it up, is a bad idea. Let's go ahead and see what this thing caught. Anything. wait for quite a while to let the water kind of uh, trickle through. Check that out. 
crawfish coming through there. So he found his way in. And that opening is just perfect for a crawfish. Let's go ahead and pour these out and see what we have right here. Look at there. Big crawfish. Several of them. So, there you go. Good looking guys. Here's your uh, bluegill. A little mud on him. Spikes up. You caught that. Can't actually keep those with this kind of trap. Throw this back correctly. A couple of small baby bluegills. Ow, oh, he was hidden in there. Go ahead and throw those back. And, due to the size of the uh, trap entrance, we've got some really decent sized crawfish. They've gone ahead and uh, disappeared. They'll make their way back to the water pretty fast on their own. Those are your red swamp crawfish. That was uh, about three, four hours in the water during the daylight hours. We get more activity here in high summer at nighttime. But that's a successful trap. Well, that's uh, all we got in there right now. But then chunk those back. The bait's still good, so I can throw this out again. And uh, see what else we catch, guys. But there you go. And those are your bottle traps. Use them responsibly. Make sure that you uh, go ahead and recycle them and break them down when you're done with them. Like and subscribe, and as always, until next time.